no idea what version of South Carolina football we're going to get in 2024. It's kind of one of the more paradox teams that we don't have a good baseline on right now because I could see them going eight and four. I could see them going four and eight. I could see them going and impressing everybody like they have over the last few years. But at least going into the summer months, we know who is the starting quarterback, even though we kind of had a good inclination that Lenore Sellers was going to replace Spencer Rattler. But Shane Beamer made it official. Sellers is now QB1 and leading up to the game against Old Dominion. What can we take away from this? What are the positives of this for South Carolina? And could Sellers sell us as fans of being a top-tier quarterback in the SEC? Let's go ahead and discuss but what's going on SEC Unfiltered. It's the one and only Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video. Hit the ring notification down below. That way you don't miss a single episode of SECU. Because we're talking college football every single day about the number one conference leading up to week one and well throughout the chaotic craziness of the 2024 season. And hit subscribe, people, because the only way that we continue to give you great content is if you subscribe to us. Make sure that you also subscribe to the podcast version of the show, wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Make sure you're following us on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Doesn't really matter. We're everywhere and we're going to be everywhere at SEC Unfiltered. If you want to follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson, you want to follow my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. I talk national college football over there and to keep up with the number one content surrounding your favorite sport and your favorite conference, make sure that you visit secunfiltered.com. This episode of SEC Unfiltered is brought to you by Roback.com. Promo code SECU for 20% off your first purchase of all performance polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, and much, much more. Make sure you use the promo code SECU at Roback.com. Tell them your friends from SEC Unfiltered sent you over there. So, Sellers is now the starting quarterback for South Carolina. Not a big shocker. I don't think anybody thought after the addition of Robbie Ashford that this was going to push the narrative forward that Sellers was not the guy. I think Beamer was sold on Sellers for a while. I mean, when you look at the guy and you see the way he plays football, how can you not be? You're talking about a mobile, hyper-athletic quarterback with intangibles and incredible upside who still is growing into his game. He's six foot three, 245 pounds. He ran, I mean, he passed for 86 yards last year, two touchdowns. He also can boot, scoot, and boogie. He's got a little bit of mobility, ran for a touchdown, averaged 10.2 yards per play. There was enough coming out of the spring game that I think you felt comfortable naming number 16 the number one option in the passing attack. And I'm not here to say that South Carolina has to only rely on sellers. This is a team sport. And the good news is you were able to go ahead and add in at least some other players around him to where he doesn't have to be the entire process. I've had this conversation with multiple South Carolina fans and multiple fans of college football in general because everyone wants to go ahead and put down Spencer Rattler. Well, Rattler was the reason why potentially you won two games last year in the SEC. Rattler was the reason why your record of five and seven is somewhat respectable. It doesn't help when you have a turnstile as an offensive line. You have one weapon that you actually trust in Xavier Leggett. You lose your number two weapon, and now he transfers to another school in the SEC as a graduate to close out his chapter before going to the pros because that's where he thinks he has the best shot of making success in making a college football playoff appearance, and your defense was hit and miss every single week. Rattler and Xavier Leggett were the saviors and the solution last year. This year, it could be Sellers, and it could be Rocket Sanders. It could be a breakout wide receiver. It could be another name that we haven't even discussed yet. But the thing that I take away mostly when it comes to Sellers is everyone is on the same page. You look at quarterback battles that go on throughout the summer months that lead up into the regular season, that take their time, that never seem to actually feel like that there is a separation between the two. Well, then you're going into the year with a lot of questions. You know what I don't question? Quarterback play in Columbia. I don't. I know, and everyone in that locker room knows, Sellers is the guy. So how do we better ourselves around Sellers? That way we feel confident that we can get over the hump. How do we better ourselves around a quarterback who could end up being incredibly special, could end up bringing back the joggers, could end up bringing back the spectacles and turn them into a household figure. He could be the next Eric Gagne and people throughout the state of South Carolina are buying goggles to feel like their quarterback, they're supporting him. How do we support him best by bettering our odds? How do we support him better by making sure our team knows where his strengths and his weaknesses are? 
And when you go throughout fall camp and when you go throughout summer practice and you don't know who is QB1, you kind of have to play this waiting game. As somebody that covered Texas A&M for three years, I remember every offseason we talked about the quarterback position. After Kellen Mond left, you watched his teams had to make the advantage. So it was Haynes King and Zach Calzada. Well, the battle went all the way on until the very, very end of week one. It was like the Wednesday before the game against Texas State. Jimbo Fisher names the starting quarterback. It's Haynes King. And he has his highs and he has his lows. And then Zach Calzada comes in. And Calzada, very much, you can see why there was a separation. But then the next year, same thing again. Instead of Calzada, it's Max Johnson. And Max Johnson now is pushing Haynes King. King wins the starting job. King struggles. King gets hurt. They go to Max Johnson. And so you're sitting here and saying, well, neither one of them really proved that they could actually be a difference maker. So I understand why Jimbo had to wait. Because if he realized, I don't have a quarterback right now. When you look right in South Carolina, in a pivotal year for Shane Beamer, a year where a lot of people are saying, it's either time to nut up or shut up, you got to prove it. And so... Going into fall camp, knowing that 16 is the right option, it solves a lot of your issues right now. It allows you to kind of have a baseline of what we can run offensively, what we can't run offensively. It allows your wide receivers to be able to build that relationship. It allows your offensive line to know, hey, instead of Robbie Ashford back there, who is a much who is a mobile quarterback and probably will rely on the run a little bit more, we may have to give sellers a little bit more time for pass pro. It just gives you a good baseline. It gives you a good understanding about where you are as a team. And this isn't to say that potentially you won't see a change in quarterback. You listen to Beamer's comments yesterday. He made it clear. He said, "I'm. this is a job that Lenoris is the starting quarterback coming out of spring. But like I told Lenoris and like I told Robbie, Robbie did a great job during spring practice along with the other quarterbacks. Lenoris did a great job and I expect Lenoris to continue to compete and earn the position as well. It's not a week-by-week basis, but at the same time, when you're in a crucial year, you got to do what's best for your team. What works right now? Is it a quarterback that you think has intangibles and upside with the rushing attack, and it could give you a one-two combination in the backfield that only bolsters your ground game, but you still end up being 6-6 and or 5-7 and or 7-5, and and you lose a lot of games because if your defense can't get the job done, the passing attack ranks in the bottom 10 in in all of college football, Or do you feel like that there is an enigma and a difference that is going to provide more consistency for a guy like Sellers? To me, the reason why I love this thing is because of going into fall camp, everyone is on the same page. Everyone has a clear-cut indication, this is how our offense is going to emulate, this is how our offense is going to run, and if we can't go ahead and figure out the flaws here, well, now we're in trouble. And now we can turn to a guy like Robbie Ashford, but if that doesn't work, well, Fire up the resume because I may be looking for a brand new job and a brand new home at the end of the season. I'm not saying that Sellers can't be the guy. You watch him play. You see the version of him that was emulating a lot of high-profile success in the spring game. You hear the reports coming out of Columbia throughout spring practice. Sellers seems sold to be a really good option for the Gamecocks. Doesn't make it the only option, but it certainly is an option that I think is a huge advantage for this team moving forward. All will be said and done by the season's end. Week one cannot come fast enough. Old Dominion, then you got a tough cast against Kentucky going into Lexington and then LSU. By that point, you may have a better understanding about what type of quarterback Sellers is and what type of version South Carolina can be by the season's end. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of Sellers as the starting quarterback? Like, we didn't know it was already going to happen. What do you think about South Carolina going into 2024? Can they actually achieve greatness and get over that hump? Or is it time to hit the reset button once again and start back at the blueprints? Make sure that you're also following us on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered and at Mr. Cole Thompson. Make sure you visit Roback.com. Use the promo code SECU for 20% off your first purchase on all performance polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, and more. Promo code SECU at Roback.com. And to keep up with the number one content surrounding your favorite team, make sure that you visit SECUnfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Until next time, folks. Until next time, South Carolina fans. Later.